earlier this year there was a, a proposed decalendaring. Uh, and so I wanted to ask, is there currently any plan to have another uh, decalendaring en masse? All right. Uh, we did put that on hold. And uh, I think one of the things I was referring to earlier is that we, it's right now we have a comment period. We've asked stakeholders to provide their input. And that goes on until March 1st. And after that, uh, the agency will take in all those comments, look for consensus, and come up with a plan, and uh, uh, probably by the end of the summer. So it, the plan, I suspect the plan is going to be much more nuanced than what we initially planned. Right now we're in the budget hearing. You've made a very modest request for additional staff. Uh, why isn't uh, LPC or you putting in a request for more staff or temporary staff in order to get through the calendar backlog so that every single uh, landmark that has been calendared can be appro appropriately reviewed and addressed? Um, we've, got, uh, we've got a great chair and uh, our, our landmarks chair, Ku. We're happy to go through hundreds if not thousands of landmarks with you and get them all voted through and approved. Um, so I guess why not ask for additional resources now as part of the no, budget? No, no, I'm not happy to do that, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was speaking to our landmarks chair, uh, Ku, and uh, we've got a lot on the calendar. Why not follow the due process that was associated with them when they were calendared? All right. I think uh, I guess there are a couple of things. One is uh, it's always good to have more resources, and that could take care of part of it. Uh, but I think there's some recognition that, in fact, uh, these buildings have been active for a period of time, and there's a reason for that. Uh, I think that it's not just the resources of the staff, it's the resources of the commission as well. Uh, we have a volunteer commission, and it has we have a significant amount of workload, and every calendar or public hearing that we have is full. So I think we're, we recognize that there may be buildings within that group um, that should proceed and be designated, but I think we'd first like to find out what this framework is that would work, and then if we need additional resources, then at that time we'd be asking for them. So, so within the uh, comment period, if this it may, may this serve as my official comment that I'd like you to uh, bring on appropriate staffing so that each and every calendared item is actually reviewed appropriately and uh, voted on by the body versus just an en masse decalendering? If you would like to put that in record, yes, I, I understand that. Perfect. Thank you. And then, uh, well, uh, I am friendly to all of my colleagues who may wish to bring uh, landmarks and preservation into their district. Uh, I am particularly con uh, concerned about my district. We, I, I grew up in Yorkville. Uh, my grandparents came over from Hungary when they were uh, fleeing anti-Semitism uh, in uh, pre-war Europe. And uh, luckily, they're the ones who survived. And that's why I'm here. And so the Upper East Side, some people know it as one thing. The portion I represent from 2nd Avenue and over is known as Yorkville. It was settled by Germans and Hungarians. And uh, we have a lot of these six-story brownstones uh, all over the place and walk-ups with uh, rent-regulated apartments where a lot of seniors live, a lot of people who speak German and Hungarian live. And uh, we'd really love to see that area landmarked. I'm quite jealous of the Park Avenue Historic District. would love to have a Yorkville Historic District so that we can have some ties to uh, the, the landmarks that made our neighborhood what it is today. Okay. We can take a look at that. Thank you very much. Uh, 